To all the faithful, please enjoy this brand new video. Among the true mystics that exist in the world, Luisa Picaretta is clearly noteworthy. The number of true mystics in the world may be counted on the fingers of one hand. She was a woman of exceptional religious and piousness and she possessed a wonderful gift that she had received directly from God. As is the case with the visionaries of Medjugorje, there is still a great deal of controversy occurring in the realm of seers, as well as a great deal of disagreement and uncertainty. Nevertheless, there is no room for dispute when it comes to people such as Luisa Picaretta, who are universally regarded. When you pay close attention until the very end, you will be able to comprehend a surprising fact that is also filled with faith. This devout woman saw a clear vision of what lies beyond death. During the course of her astounding disclosures regarding the afterlife, a little woman named Luisa Picareta, who lived in Puglia and had been paralyzed in bed for more than seven decades, caused a commotion in the world of religions. All things considered, this woman was a miraculous and unexplained phenomenon in her own right. Luisa Picareta, who was born in an impoverished village in Puglia in the year 1865, ended up spending her entire life on earth in a physical state that was incomprehensible to the medical science that existed at the time. The medical professionals who evaluated her at a young age found her to be a complete and utter mystery. This humble peasant woman, who was endowed with amazing gifts, claimed to have profound mystical experiences, supernatural visions, and even the sacred stigmata of Christ, which were invisibly imprinted on her flesh. She was also born with extraordinary gifts. When Luisa Picaretta was only 13 years old, however, she experienced a significant turning point in her life that would forever alter her. During that time period, young Luisa would devote a significant amount of time to practicing prayer and meditation, with a special focus on pondering the agony and suffering that Jesus Christ had to go through during his passion. One day, when she was deeply engrossed in one of these meditations, concentrating her thoughts on the extraordinary sufferings that Calvary endured, she suddenly had a vision that was extraordinary and shocking. Right in front of her eyes was the heartbreaking picture of Jesus, who was bending over under the enormous weight of the crucifixion and suffering along the way of the crucifixion in order to reach the location where he would be executed. The body of the Nazarene was severely injured and dripping with blood, and the enraged throng shoved and ridiculed him in a cruel manner. During that horrible time, Jesus glanced up at Luisa with a pleading gaze, as if he were begging for assistance. Soul, help me. The young girl's heart was cut like a flaming blade by those few words, which were said with a tone that conveyed profound grief and pain. Because it was such a profound and genuine spiritual experience, it left an indelible effect on Luisa's life, igniting within her a strong want to share in the sufferings of the Redeemer in order to alleviate the terrible agony that he was experiencing. When Luisa was 16 years old, she made the radical decision to commit herself as a mystical victim, combining her own sufferings with those of Christ in order to atone for the sins of humanity. These few words had such a profound impact on her heart that she made this decision without hesitation. The discoveries that Picaretta made regarding the afterlife of souls after death were compiled in a series of 36 volumes that were released after his death. These revelations are so comprehensive and vivid that they appear to be virtually genuine. The moment that the human spirit leaves the physical body after death on earth is described as a peaceful and light-filled experience, according to her exceptional mystical revelations on the subject. Luisa explains that once the soul is completely liberated from its physical body, it is immediately engulfed in a light that is both warm and comforting, and it exudes an infinite sense of calm. When the soul is in this state of grace, it is not alone or abandoned. Rather, it immediately comes into contact with the loving figure of Jesus Christ himself, who greets it with open arms and love that is both unconditional and limitless. Jesus Christ is the one who comes face to face with the soul in order to direct it on its new spiritual journey and demonstrate his boundless love for it. It is during that sublime moment of transition that the soul is greeted by the Savior with an embrace that is brimming with light and love. The Savior takes the soul by the hand with an endless amount of concern. According to Luis's visions, there is no room for worries or concerns since Jesus is waiting for each and every soul. With an embrace that is filled with divine kindness, in order to introduce it to the new world of the hereafter. 
The experience is so profound that it may be conveyed in a few words, but it is characterized by a moving beauty and sweetness. If you would want to continue, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel and leave a like. We have a really important question that we would like to go over with you, so be sure that you don't miss a single second. In contrast to what is often believed, purgatory is not a physical location, but rather a phase of spiritual cleansing that is lovingly guided by God. During this phase, the soul recalls its existence on earth in order to completely comprehend the significance of that life. As a result, every individual is going to be subjected to a specific judgment which, contrary to what one might expect, is not going to be a punishing or terrible experience. These descriptions of the afterlife that Louisa has provided are just breathtaking in their beauty. At long last, the soul is liberated from all anguish and suffering, and it is submerged in an ocean of love, light, and unending calm. An indescribable and unending joy that revitalizes the very soul can be found in the beatific vision of God, which is the wellspring of this joy. Picaretta's writings have been thoroughly investigated by a large number of theologians and specialists in Christian mysticism, who have come to the conclusion that her insights, which are astounding and at times almost incredible, are in complete agreement with the teachings of the Church as well as the testimonies of other great mystics. One of the most well-known Vaticanists made the observation that her remarks convey a sense of peace and serenity in the face of the mystery of death which is genuinely affecting. The cause for the beatification of Luisa Picareta, which was initiated in 1994 and is currently underway at the Holy See, has received a great deal of support and backing from thousands of faithful individuals all over the world. These individuals have discovered that her comments regarding the hereafter have provided them with a great deal of solace and hope. A woman, who was 75 years old, stated that the words of this simple woman regarding death and the mystery of what awaits souls in the afterlife have renewed my faith that had been wavering and erased my fear of the unknown. Luisa Picaretta's words appear to open an extraordinary window on the mystery of life after physical death, a mystery that has tormented and fascinated humanity for centuries and may have finally been unveiled by the visions of this mystic of the invisible stigmata who hails from a humble village in Puglia. Whether these visions are true divine revelations or simply extraordinary mystical visions of a woman with incredible inner experiences, Luisa Picareta's words seem to open a window on the mystery of life after physical death. Are you aware that prayer is the most effective tool that we possess? The power of prayer is such that it can alter the course of events as well as our own lives. Always keep in mind that God reads our hearts, not our lips, and that we should pray with a heart that is full of faith and sincerity. The origin of our religion lies within our hearts. Make sure that you set aside 10 minutes every day to pray. What is important is not the length or content of your prayers, but rather the manner in which you pray. It is necessary for your heart to be filled with genuine faith. Putting our eyes together, let us state the following. I pray that the name of our Father who is in heaven be sanctified. I pray that your kingdom will come and that you will be done, just as it is in heaven. Give us today the bread that we need to survive, pardon us for our transgressions, just as we forgive those who have transgressed against us, and do not lead us into temptation, but free us from things that are bad. All praise be to the Holy Queen, the Mother of Mercy, our strength, our sweetness, and our hope. To you, miserable children of Eve who have been sent out of the garden, we wail. To you we send up our sighs, sorrow, and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, your eyes of kindness toward us, and after this our exile, present unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. God will save us. I pray that you are calm, loving, and a sweet Virgin Mary. The question is, what are your thoughts on this extraordinary tale? Include your response in the comments section. I pray that your journey of religion is beneficial.